Hi, this is Rashid. Thanks so much for uh, tuning in and watching my videos. I really appreciate that. So today's video is about um, sine binary multiplication. In the last video, we look at uh, unsigned binary multiplication. And these videos that I'm doing, in, just in case you have um, found my channel and you started with this video, just to tell you that um, my videos are in sequence. So I might be using some of the things from the previous videos that I've created. So if you really want to learn um, things properly, uh, thoroughly from my videos, I think it's best if you start from video one and go on. The thing that you already know, you can skip them quickly. But uh, for sign and unsign, okay, these are some, uh, the, the sign numbers are always tricky. But you have to include sign numbers because in, in, in real uh, applications, you might encounter with uh, uh, unsigned or sign numbers. So while you're creating your hardware for unsigned number, it's simple. You don't have to worry about the sign. Uh, but there could be applications in hardware where the input real uh, number uh, in a real application that you're dealing with is a negative number. In that case, you need to uh, understand it. And one thing I haven't done, I'm so far I've been dealing with integers only, not uh, fractions. Uh, and we will look into um, maybe one or two videos, how we can represent that information because that is going to complicate the numbers again. So I have videos where I have explained the whole binary system because the system that we are familiar with is the uh, base 10 system binary system is a little different and I've also done videos on sorry, I've done videos on how you can represent negative numbers in binary so really suggest that you you search my channel and I might put that in the description of, of this video too okay where is the video uh, which I explained and uh, how you get negative numbers but anyway I'll give you a quick uh, background on it anyway but it will be a quick one so on this side I am multiplying an unsigned number there's no sign both are positive and on this side I am multiplying a sign number okay so let's focus on this can I move it looks like I can't I make bigger so focus on on this part first this is a repetition because we have already done a video on unsigned numbers but I will still explain here so that we can have a comparison for the sign number bear with me um, it's not complicated at all and you will understand it but again as I always say it's always good that the example that I give you first try that and then do some more example to understand the concept thoroughly. Okay, let's look into this. This will be a revision for you. Binary numbers have weights. Each location has a binary weight. As you go from right to left, the weight increases. In an unsigned number, there is no negative weight here. These are all positive weights. So 1110. It's actually this 8, this 4, and this is 2, which adds up to 14. Then this number is 8, 4, and 1, which is 13, plus 13. I mean, I just put plus, but there's no need to put it because there's no sign of this number. And you know when there's no sign, it's a positive number. So when you multiply the two um, in decimal, the number is, in decimal, is 182. And how we multiply it? Pretty simple. Just like decimal, we calculate partial products. Since each of this and since this number, which is multiplicand, we are multiplying with a multiplier. And there are four bits of multiplier. And the way we do is we start with every bit one by one. And we multiply that bit with the whole multiplicand. And the answer comes as a partial product. So first one, we multiply with this whole number. Answer is this one. Second, you pick this one. You multiply with whole this number. Answer is this one. 
partial product 2. Since you're multiplying with 0, everything is 0. Third number, partial product 3. And since I've covered it, so let's do, go, do a little bit quicker. 4 number 1, partial product 4. And you also learned that the way we do is, we have four letters, so we add two binding positions, so A, B, and we can also take a carry in from the previous state. So what we do is, first we add this and this. So our sum is partial product 1 and partial product 2, right? And so once we have S1, we have partial product 3. And why we are shifting every partial products by this? Because this number, let's say this number, is not just 1. It has a weight of 4, 2 raised to power 2. Or in other words, ideally, it should start here. And so that's why the partial product 3 starts over here because it actually has a weight of 4, not 1. And if it has a weight of 1, we would start it from here. Just like base 10, nothing different. So once we have partial product 3, what we do is we add S1 and partial product 3. So that's, sorry, this is S2. So I put all this into equation. So that you, when later on we compare, it's easy for you. So sum 1, partial product 1, partial product 2, sum 2, sum 1 plus partial product 3, sum 3, this one, which is the final sum, which is the sum of partial uh, sum of 2 plus partial product 4. And we will look in, we will actually do a math on it. But just to give you, this, this is how we did it. And this position, what was over here? Okay, uh, we just assume zero. Here zero, but here zero. So if I look into, um, let's look into, let's pick a color. Like so this one is zero for sure, because every number star, every push up starts with, you know, another shift. But this number over here. We are also putting 0. And I explained you that when you multiply to 4-bit number, answer can be maximum in 8 bits. So if you look at these are one, sorry, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So we need to 8 bits. So all these, we put zeros. I'm just coloring them different because they represent different way. Now let's move on to the right side. And let's see how sign will be different than this on sign. So sign number, as you know, better. sign number, you see that the, le uh, the leftmost bit has a negative weight. So 2 raised to power 3, 2 raised to power 3, but its weight is actually minus. So its weight is plus 8, its weight is minus 8. That is important. So I'm just using the same number. But uh, now I'll assume that the most significant bit is a sine bit or is negative, or this is the way we write things in 2's complement. Again, watch my 2's complement video for that. Okay, so if you look at this weight of minus 8, so minus 8, and this is 4 plus 2. 4 plus 2, 6, minus 8, result is minus 2. So the same binary number, now we're assuming this is sine bit, turns out to be minus 2 as opposed to plus 14. Similarly, this one, so instead of, of plus 13, if you look at this, minus 8, then 4 and 1, 5, minus 8 plus 5, minus 3. And if you multiply these two, become 182, and if you multiply these two, you say. So there is literally nothing on the on the binary in terms of uh, writing one zero. Uh, they are exactly the same, but in your mind or when you create a hardware, you know that, okay, what the most significant bit means here versus here. And then you develop hardware according to that. But of course, you need to tell whoever look at this. You say it's a sign number, it's a sign four bit number where the fourth bit, the most significant bit, is a negative 
bit or negative eight. So this one is plus six. So you must be thinking, okay, what's the difference? If in binary, if I do exactly the same thing, it will turn out to be different than this one. I mean, plus six representation in four bit has to be different than uh, 182. So where is the difference? What happens? How we differentiate between the two? So let's look into that. So partial product one, two, sum, partial product three, sum, all same. Exactly this one. Even though here I've just put these things. But the operation difference in, wait a minute, I just want to get, so this bit, no, no difference again. Each bit here, this is 2 raised to power 0, so you put partial product here, here, 2 raised to power 1, so you start here, here, you start here, here, you start here, right? So, how are the differences? So, these two bits, um, this bit and this bit, when we are multiplying, when these two bits are involved, keep in mind they have a negative weight. So partial product 1, you put 0, I mean it's 1, multiply with this whole thing, <coughs> excuse me, uh, this whole thing comes down 0, 1, 1, 1. But like in this case, we have 0, 0, we cannot put zeros. Because keep in mind that eventually 4 bit, multiply 4 bit answer becomes 8 bit. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. There will be another extension here. So total will be 8 bits. And when the answer is in 8 bits, the more significant of the 8 bit, the bit that will here will have a negative weight. So if you put 0 here, if you extend it, then this number no longer is minus 2. So if I put, for example, here, and apologies if I'm confusing you but I want to give you more detail so if I put 0 0 0 0 like this whole number translate that into if I put 0 this will be 2 raised to power 0 2 raised to power 1 2 3 and then 4 5 6 and this will be minus 2 raised to power 7 I mean this becomes 0 means it's a positive number, but we have a negative minus 2. If this number comes down, it has to be minus 2. And the only way we do it, by how? By instead of making it 0, whatever is the sign here, this sign goes here. So it's 1, it's 1. And we just extend it to the number of bits we need to have. Similarly, partial products 2, this is the sign. So then 0, 0. It doesn't make any difference. I mean, this one is already 0 anyway. So it's 1, 0. This one, 1, 1. And this one. So if you look at this whole thing, that's the different things. If you compare it with this one. And that's what is going to determine a different result for us. But that's not the end of it. There's a one more difference because you've seen that this bit, whenever it's involved, it will be extended because it's minus weight. And we need to make sure that minus weight goes all the way here. And the only way is we bring it here. And try to do your calculation on the way. This should give you minus two. Now, similarly, partial product two, you add sum, sum 1 is partial product 1, sign extended, plus partial product 2, which is sign extended. Partial product sum 2, it is sum 1, which we calculate here, plus partial product 3, sign extended, I should say. Okay, let's, let's uh, write it here, so that is complete. All right, the other difference is, now when you're multiplying with this number, again, we have a problem. 
this number multiply I mean, this is not 2 raised to power 3 plus 8 it's minus 2 raised to power 3 so you're multiplying this minus with the entire number so there must be a change right and what is that change what is the change is when you get this partial product pp4 you need to take a two's complement of that two's complement of this and then you add to s2 this is important again so s1 s1 s2 s2 no difference except sine extension of course but s3 the final sum s2 as is came here sine extended but this pp4 because there's a negative number you need to calculate two's complement of that and then add that to it if you don't understand go back in the video and play it one more time so that's the key difference and in next video i'm going to do actual multiplication and additions and the intermediate step s1 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 s2 s3 and all the partial products and that will be a lot clear to you but feel free without watching my second part you try this and you calculate multiplication of this and this and see what you come up with you can also do another experiment and that is don't extend once sign do it just like and see what results you get also now don't take two's complement of it and then see what happens all right that's it for now i'll see you in the next video i'm so excited to give you an actual example of it so that you can learn it completely thank you so much talk to you next time bye